The Matrix Resurrections has been released recently over the past week, and it's been deemed pretty much a big colossal failure, with many of the professional film critics seemingly not agreeing on the quality of the film. Some have said that the movie does introduce some very interesting concepts to the Matrix universe, and that it's a worthy addition to the series, while others have simply derided it and essentially have denounced it from being a worthwhile sequel, whose time and investment is not worth the effort on the behalf of the audience. Now, I've already uploaded a general review for the movie, but now that the movie is out, I want to dive into what actually is the problem with The Matrix Resurrections, where Lana Wachowski actually failed with this movie, and why Warner Brothers should have never resurrected this series, no pun intended. After re-watching the film, I counted no less than 13 huge issues that this movie has. And so without wasting any time, just diving right into it, the first problem with The Matrix Resurrections is that the movie is too meta, meaning it relies on self-reference in a way that's insulting to viewers of the previous films for the sake of forcing nostalgia down the audience's throat. The movie references the previous movies way too often, even taking scenes directly from the previous films. It's a lazy way to rely on nostalgia instead of coming up with new material that only relies on its own wit to tell a story. This is something that Spider-Man No Way Home does, as the only references in that movie from the previous Spider-Man movies is mentioned through dialogue only. Bugs from her name to the ridiculous notion of what her character is supposed to represent is a joke that never delivers its punchline. Bugs, short for Bugs Bunny, is a nickname that points to the reference of Alice in Wonderland. The concept of Alice going down the rabbit hole into the real world. It's a reference that's way too on the nose and borderline breaks the fourth wall. And it's just another lazy means to reference the first film which also utilize the same concept. This movie takes the same concept, but it doesn't do anything new or different with it. Essentially, Bugs and her team escort Neo to a new version of Morpheus so that he can take the red pill so that they can free his mind and have him reawaken in the real world for the purposes of extraction. This isn't really any different from the first Matrix movie. Another clear example that this movie is simply just a retread of the first film. Speaking of Neo, the concept of Thomas Anderson being a world-class famous game director is silly. What's even more silly is the concept of Thomas Anderson directing a Game of the Year title called The Matrix and having figurines on his desk of characters and poses taken from scenes from the previous movies is too stupid to take serious. I'm not really sure where the whole... Neo's a, a game developer came from. I'm not sure where that idea originated and why Lana Wachowski decided to keep that in the script. This is part of the reason why it's hard to take the movie seriously, because there are things within this story that simply should not be, and this is one of them. Another thing that bothered me is how the hackers within this new version of The Matrix is able to enter the Matrix at will and see what the runner sees while inside the system. And exit whenever they please is an interesting concept, but it's one that breaks previous rules established in the previous three films, where the hacker can only see the runner through Matrix code and communicate with runners in the real world at a computer. Again, this is an interesting concept, but however, the problem with the hackers being able to enter inside the Matrix and see whatever is going on inside the system. The problem with this is that it doesn't line up with previous rules established with the original Matrix trilogy. What's more, at several points throughout the movie, it's this very element that actually helps to kill tension in whatever action scene that's taking place. A great example would be the escape of Bugs and Morpheus at the very beginning of the movie. I'm all for bringing back old characters as a means to you know, pay homage to a previous established work, which in this movie's case, the character Niobe returns here. But I have a few different issues with this now new version of Niobe. First of all, Niobe wasn't really important whatsoever in the original Matrix trilogy. 
she was a tertiary character and she wasn't really a supporting character to anyone. Another issue that I have is turning Niobe into a general. If you take a look at the older movies, specifically Matrix Reloaded and Matrix Revolutions, Niobe is the only captain that's known to disobey orders. She's a character that sounds to her own drum, which makes her a renegade. Definitely the kind of person that's not suited for a position of leadership. Yet, in this movie, we find out that Niobe has actually become general. Another issue that I had with Niobe is that aging her is a particularly strange decision as it brings a very small tertiary character back from the original trilogy. But what's even more strange is this concept of a 60-year gap between Matrix Revolutions and this new movie. The fact that this concept of a purge and installation of a new version of the Matrix just creates a laundry list of different inconsistencies with the story. The main of which is this. If some random person or program can reboot the Matrix by installing a new version of it into the system, then what's stopping this series from ever ending in the first place? At that point, what's preventing the machines from eventually winning and destroying humanity? An even bigger issue, going back to Niobe, is the fact that she seems to have no control over certain captains, like Bugs and her crew, for example, whom she doesn't even try to stop them leaving Io on their mission to liberate Trinity from the Matrix. When Bugs and her crew commandeer her ship and leave Io, you would think that Niobe would send other captains after her, because Niobe is under the impression that if anyone under her command disobeys orders, then it could have a negative ripple effect on the citizens of Io, which puts everybody at risk. Something that Niobe actually verbally explains in the movie. Yet she contradicts herself when she allows Bugs and her crew to leave, complete with the stolen ship that doesn't even belong to them. And if that wasn't bad enough, then there's the scene with the Merovingian which is one of the worst cameos I've seen in recent cinema. It's something that's truly completely random and unnecessary. This character was only inserted to have another weird nod to the original films, but it's ultimately not important to the story at large. The Merovingian didn't need to be in this movie and had no business being anywhere in the story. I'm not even going to speak on the atrocious dialogue that they gave him. Something that was quite strange with this is the special effects. Some of the special effects, such as the actor Jonathan Groff, who plays Agent Smith in this movie, performing bullet time in order to dodge bullets, looks extremely silly, and, and that's probably due to the effect that likely the movie was mishandled during post-production. It comes off as very unfinished and just goofy looking, like he's dancing. Speaking of Jonathan Groff, Smith is another character that's ruined from the original trilogy as he doesn't have a purpose like he did in the original movie or its two sequels. The Smith in this movie is just some random program that pops up at a moment's notice to provide some weak dialogue with an action sequence to complement it. Why he still has beef with Neo doesn't make much sense at this point given how long it's been. In fact, bringing back Smith at all was a strange choice that should have been avoided completely especially considering that the character was destroyed at the end of Matrix Revolutions. Oh, but it gets worse from there. Because this movie is writing nostalgia so heavily, of course they couldn't help themselves but to bring back yet another character from the original Matrix trilogy. 60 years has apparently passed between the end of Revolutions and this new movie, yet the character Sati, who appeared as the little girl in Matrix Revolutions, now only appears to be in her 20s but has clearly aged like the other characters. Could it be that programs age slower than humans? If the answer to that question is yes, why does the Merovingian appear to be much older than his former self compared to Sati? Is it because the Merovingian was already grown in the original trilogy? The problem here is that the lore of the series hasn't been grounded to where these questions don't already answer themselves. Sometimes some exposition is good and necessary to explain things that would help to make a story make sense. The problem with the Matrix movies since the first film is that they fail to find a proper balance with the necessary exposition without overloading on it. This is definitely an issue with Matrix Reloaded in Revolutions in particular. 
Then, of course, there's what they did to Trinity. Neo on the power scale is downgraded considerably at the end of this movie on purpose in order to give Trinity a push. The problem here is that Trinity was never truly important as she only served to be the love interest in the previous movies. What's more, Neo and Trinity's relationship was never properly developed. Trinity only fell in love with Neo because she needed another character to tell her that's what would happen. Of course, that character is the Oracle. It seems that the prophecy of the One is also ruined here as Neo never truly ended anything as revolutions implied that he did. This switch with Trinity along with the very existence of this movie accomplishes only one thing. And that's the fact that the original Matrix trilogy was a complete waste of time in the first place. The original three movies were about Neo becoming the one to fulfill a prophecy that would save humanity from extinction from its own creation, from machines. This movie says, fuck all that. Let's reboot this and start over. What this movie does with Trinity simply falls in line with other recent female characters in Hollywood and Hollywood's attempt to force gender diversity into main roles. It didn't work with other similar characters like Rey from Star Wars or the terrible female-led Ghostbusters reboot that failed to connect with audiences, and it doesn't work here. And it doesn't work because it's forced. Besides Trinity, the biggest problem with The Matrix Resurrections is the character known as The Analyst, which is played by Neil Patrick Harris. The Analyst is another big problem, as the reason this character chooses to reboot the system isn't really discussed, nor does the film go into too many details surrounding the resurrection of Neo and Trinity, which doesn't truly make sense to begin with. The father of the character Sati from The Matrix Revolutions is explained to have created the resurrection pods that Neo and Trinity are placed within, but it still doesn't make much sense how they were magically brought back to life or what the analyst truly wants in the first place, which seems to be nothing but a world of control. In retrospect, the analyst's version of The Matrix is not really any different than the original version of The Matrix. If the movie wasn't bad enough, the producers or Lana Wachowski or both decided to use a female rendition of Rage Against the Machine's classic Wake Up, which was used at the end of the first Matrix film. This backs up the idea that the movie is truly nothing more than a simple-minded reboot of the first film, one that's far worse, overly convoluted, and frustratingly too meta for its own good. It all adds up to nothing more than nonsensical feminist propaganda, which lines up with the now female-inspired ideas from Lana Wachowski. The Matrix Resurrections is just another in a long line of films inspired by classics that Hollywood has brought back, only to make a cheap dollar off the dumb masses. If a good number of the comments I received on my Matrix Resurrections video is anything to go by, many people have deep adoration and passion for the original Matrix, but have become blinded by its greatness. People have been chasing that feeling the original film gave them since 1999, and every subsequent Matrix movie has failed to live up to the original. Therefore, it doesn't matter if Resurrections was made 10 years ago, 15 years ago, or 20 years ago, it still would have failed regardless because the Wachowskis are truly one-hit wonder directors whose storytelling chops are completely below average. This movie is another example that just because you can bring back an old property doesn't mean that you should. Instead of chasing old glory, Hollywood once again has been proven wrong. What modern Hollywood producers should do is hire new writers and new producers to produce new material that's not based on books or previous movies that are decades old. In other words, new material. But of course, that's not considered to be profitable in the modern film industry, is it?